Happy Lunar New Year and welcome to City Market Watch, where we concisely unpack all you need to know on important topics. Joining me, Audrey Cheong, City Go Private Client Portfolio Counselor. I am overflowing calories. <laughs> me too, Audrey. I'm not going to tell you how many people have noted how prosperous I'm supposedly looking. And if I may, that Cheong Sam looks fabulous on you. Thank you. I credit my mother's fabulous genes. Celebrating Lunar New Year, especially post-COVID, has been incredibly joyous and priceless. But it goes without saying that we are failing on the moral front, that in our modern world, for all the economic gains, technological advancements, nearly one third of us worry where our next meal will come from. And one in 10 of us suffer from hunger and malnutrition. This shouldn't be the case. Son, you say one third of the world's population experiences food insecurity, yet one third of all food is wasted or not consumed. In theory, this is easy math to fix. And whilst you could say that the perfect storm of droughts, wars, high inflation and supply chain issues have put us off course, even accounting for that, nearly a billion people are without food or starving each day. The UN's Food and Agriculture Organization estimates the cost of malnutrition to the global economy to be as high as $3.5 trillion per year. So what are the key things to address and perhaps the obvious solutions? Firstly, we shouldn't be fixated on the costs, but note that the total economic gains to society in investing in nutrition are estimated at $5.7 trillion per year by 2030 and rising to $10.5 trillion a year by 2050. Needless to say, there are also human benefits to ending the inhumanity of hunger, starvation and malnutrition. What are the obvious solutions? We can bucket them into social, technological, economic, or financial, and governmental solutions. Mm. Thanks, Audrey. Considering technology or ag tech, we are seeing an important shift from just increasing crop yield to sustainability. Since World War II, technology has been about industrializing agriculture, from GMO seeds to synthetic fertilizers. The Green Revolution doubled global food production from 1960 to 2000, but it came at great environmental cost to soil, groundwater, lakes, rivers, streams, and oceans. With biotech, we are growing plants that are disease resistant, yet with enhanced nutrition content. With automation and robotics, we are replacing labor, incorporating AI into innovative technologies for weeding, harvesting, sensing, and monitoring. In all, making farming more efficient. With animal ag tech, we are improving breeding, genetics, herd management, all with greater precision. And with supply chain technology, we are improving on food safety, but importantly, driving efficiencies into food logistics. Considering social solutions, it is about reducing food wastage, at least that one third and more. Do you know that again, one third of fruit and vegetables are discarded because of their appearance? Are these inappropriate cosmetic demands on imperfections need to stop? Infrastructure like cold storage needs to improve, especially across developing countries. And last for now, but not least, do we need to consume so much meat? Half of habitable land is used for agriculture, yet almost 80% of that is for raising livestock. And meat only contributes 17% of our calories intake. Those are scary numbers, Audrey. And I'm already joining the dots on deforestation and the loss of biodiversity. I'm thinking that alternatives like plant-based or cultivated meats look suddenly even more delicious. This must win challenge takes on an added dimension when you consider that the global population will add another 2 billion people by 2050. Many and most who will likely be consuming a calorie-rich diet. This also implies that the world will need to produce more food in the next 40 years than all the farmers have produced in the last 8,000. And this mass wind challenge has to navigate the impact of climate change as surface temperatures rise with increased weather volatility and the greater frequency of significant natural disasters. 
Thanks, Audrey. It's a formidable must-win challenge, and we need to do it all in the context of transitioning to a net zero world. How can we navigate the likely geopolitics? How is finance and investments helping to support and transition to these needed solutions? What are governments doing to secure and hedge food and supply chains? What other breakthrough technologies are investable in changing the food security landscape? The investment theme and proposition around food, nutrition, how it is grown and transported efficiently from farm to table is incredibly exciting and offers great opportunities. Please do listen to our podcast as we dive deeper into this important theme. And please speak to your City Gold or City Gold private client relationship manager about further opportunities. Mm-hmm.